Hi, I'm Shane with EachHire.com. Today I'm going to walk you through how to install EachHire.com's 2,500 pound winch on our 2016 Polaris Ranger. Adding a winch to your side-by-side -side is going to help you out a lot when you're off-roading. You can see the situation that we're in now. If you didn't have a winch, you'd have to rely on somebody else to pull you out of a sticky situation. Adding a winch on there, you're not only going to be able to help yourself, but you may be able to help somebody else while you're out. Here we have Lester, the owner of the Polaris Ranger that we installed the winch on. We want to ask him a few questions. Lester, what is one of the main reasons why you wanted a winch? I was out with a few friends. We were out of state, actually. Um, we were going through mud bogs, and my vehicle's a little lower profile than what theirs were. Um, they went through, and I got stuck. So there I am sitting in the middle of everything. I've got half the crew in front of me, half the crew behind me, and um, no one's going nowhere. <laughs> so did, did they obviously had winches and helped pull you out? Uh, yes. Uh, basically, I was one of the winchless people that were on the crew. Everybody else had a winch. So uh, whether they pulled me out forward or backwards, it really didn't matter. Um, it's just I wasn't going anywhere. <laughs> Well, at least they got you out. How uh, how did that make you feel when you had somebody else having to pull you out of that situation? Uh, I felt, as soon as I got stuck, it's like, oh, nuts. Um, but once again, I realized that everybody in front of me or behind me had a winch. Uh, so I realized then that I was going to, my next purchase was going to be a winch for my machine. <laughs> Very good. So I got one more question for you. Um, can you find any other things on your property that you can find useful uh, by using the winch to make the jobs easier? Um, I do have roughly five miles of trails out here. Um, uh, I try to keep them cut and I'm usually the only person out cutting them and, and blazing them, although everybody else in the neighbor wants to come over and ride them. Um, so uh, there'll be times where I'll have to drag a, a limb or something off the trail um, and it's real simple for one person to throw the cable around a, a limb and just drag it away, um, you know, winch it out of the trail. Um, I don't have to move it very far, just enough so everybody can get through. Uh, that, and we have some fence posts. We used to have uh, uh, cattle, um, and they would lean one down, um, and it was just a lot easier to just winch it straight back up and tighten up the uh, baling or the. Uh, uh, barbed wire on it. Very good. Well, Lester, I appreciate your time. I appreciate you uh, answering some of my questions, and I hope you enjoy your winch. And oh, I'm sure I will. <laughs> hopefully, you can go out and save someone else. Yes. Yeah. That would that would make me feel good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again, sir. Thank you. Now let's go ahead and get our winch hooked up and get ourselves pulled out of this situation. First thing we need to do is we need to get our winch set up on free spool. Now to get our winch in free spool, if you look right here on the passenger side, we're going to have a knob. We need to pull that knob out and twist it. This is going to allow us to put our winch in free spool mode. We're going to pull our knob out and we're going to turn it to the point where it stays out. Pull out, twist, until it stays open. Now we're going to grab our strap on our hook and we're going to pull. Now it's a good idea, before hooking up to your tree, use a tree strap. It's not only going to protect the tree, but it's also going to protect your cable or your synthetic rope. Once you got it hooked, we're going to hook the two together, and we're going to take the tension out of our cable. We're going to switch it out back out of free spool mode. It's a good idea, once you have the tension on the rope, before you start pulling your side-by-side -side out, to put a cable brake on. The reason this is a good idea is that if for some reason the cable will happen to break, the weight of the cable break will bring the rope down instead of back through the windshield, potentially hurting yourself or anybody you may have with you. So now that we're all hooked up, we're safe, we're gonna go ahead and start pulling ourselves out. You wanna make sure that your side-by-side -side is in neutral. see, even with the weight of the vehicle, this loose gravel, we're able to pull ourselves up onto a flat surface.
And once you've gotten to a safe place, you can go ahead and remove your cable brake, remove your winch, and pull your winch back in. You'll notice we're gonna have a strap here on the end. This is to allow you to grab onto it safely so your hands aren't on the cable or close to the winch. This winch is capable of pulling up to 2,500 pounds. Keep in mind, this unit weighs about 1,300 pounds, plus you're gonna to need to add any cargo or any passengers you may have inside. Now, one good thing to keep in mind is anytime you're gonna be using your winch to pull yourself out of a situation, it might be a good idea to have the passengers get out so that they're safe. Another thing to keep in mind is that that is a static line pull. What that means is uh, when you're pulling something, it has to be able to roll. You can't pull the 2,500 or 2,500 pounds when it's uh, pulling just across the ground. One thing I really like about this setup, and if you're wanting a setup like this that's really clean, it looks pretty close to factory, and that's going to be this bracket that our winch is mounted to. It's going to be made by Bulldog Winch, and it's going to be a custom fit uh, bracket for the Polaris Ranger. It's not going to require any drilling to get it installed and the winch is gonna mount directly to it. It's gonna have pre-drilled holes. Now you can see how easy it was to get ourselves out of that rough situation. But let's go take a look and see how our friend's doing. As you can see here, we found our friend side by side and he's stuck in a rut. Let's go ahead and use our winch to help pull him out. You can see we have our winch line hooked to his side by side. We have the slack out of it and we have our line break in place. One thing to keep in mind when you're pulling someone else out, you want to make sure that their side by side or whatever it is that you're pulling out is in neutral and you have your side by side with the parking brake on. You want to make sure that the winch is doing the work. Now that we've gone over some of the features and shown you how the winch works, let's go ahead and walk you through how we installed Lester's winch on his 2016 Polaris Ranger. To begin our installation, we're going to take a half inch socket. We need to remove our bumper. We're going to have three bolts that run along the bottom. We're going to have two right on the back side of each one of these rails. And we'll slide our bumper off. We'll set it down. Then we need to remove this uh, plastic grill here. We're going to use a T40 star bit. Then we're going to take our winch bracket. You want to make sure that this part is facing down towards the bottom. The plate is going to be up towards the top uh, where the top bar is. We're gonna set it in place like this. It's gonna line up the holes. Then we're gonna reinstall the bolts uh, that we're holding in the plastic grill. And we're gonna take a short hex bolt and we're gonna put it in the top corner of our bracket that we just installed. And then we're gonna install a nylon lock nut on the inside half inch socket and wrench and we'll tighten it into place. Then we're going to have two brackets that look like this. You notice that these holes are kind of offset more to one side. These two holes are going to have to line up the two holes on the plate. So if they're not lining up, just switch it to the other side. Small hex bolt. Line up with the holes. You want to make sure you notice how I have it set. It's going underneath this side brace that holds our bumper on, and the plate is sitting on top of the first plate that we installed. Then we're going to put on a flat washer and a nylon lock nut. Then we're going to take our longer hex bolt. We're going to put on a flat washer. We're going to slide through each one of the holes in each one of the brackets. Underside, we're going to put a flat washer and then a nylon lock nut. Half 
half inch socket and wrench, we'll tighten them down. Now we're gonna set our winch in place. The two holes on the bottom of the winch are gonna line up with the two holes in the bottom of the plate. Keep in mind, we have our bumper turned upside down. So the winch is gonna be mounted on the bottom side of that bracket. We're gonna take our short hex bolt that comes with the winch, slide it through, put on a flat washer, lock washer, and then a nut. And if you'll notice, I have the head of the bolt going down away from the winch. Do the same thing here, flat washer, lock washer, and a nut. Now with a 13 millimeter for the head side, 14 millimeter for the nut side. We'll tighten them into place. With this winch, you're gonna get this roller assembly. With this plate mounted on the Polaris, this roller is not gonna fit on here. So if you're wanting to use this plate mounted on the Polaris, you will have to pick up a different roller setup, which you can find here at hr.com. If you're gonna mount the winch in a different location, it's gonna come with a bracket like this, and this roller assembly will fit on that bracket. Our customer is actually gonna be switching out the cable to a synthetic rope. So we're actually gonna be installing this, which is designed for the synthetic ropes. You can find these here at eTrailer.com. Once you have your winch secured, you're gonna reinstall your front bumper in reverse order from the way you took it off. Now that we've got our winch secured, we've got our bumper put back in place, let's go ahead and run through how we installed the wiring. First thing you need to do is to mount your control box. Uh, you can see we mounted ours here. You wanna make sure wherever you mount it, you have access to this plug. We chose to mount ours here uh, because our customer is actually getting a dash mounted, dash mounted switch put in and uh, we wanted everything else to be hidden. This can really be placed anywhere. Just wanna make sure you're not gonna be drowning in, in water and it getting really, really dirty. Once you get your control box mounted, you're gonna have two sets of wires coming out of the box, a power and a ground, or a red one and a black one. Two of them are gonna be longer, uh, two are gonna be shorter. The two shorter ones, are gonna run up to the winch. The two longer ones are gonna run back to the battery. They are gonna be labeled which ones go where. Our two shorter ones, again, we ran to our winch. I will say uh, the short wires are pretty short, so you may have to extend them. You can find the extra wiring here at eachother.com. Next thing we need to do is we need to run our two wires from our control unit back to our battery. You can see we took out the center paddle and just has some bolts that hold it in. And I found the factory wiring and just zip tied it right along there. I wanna make sure it's gonna stay away from the drive shaft. Right here to our battery. Now once you get it back to your battery, you're just gonna attach the negative wire to the ground. Your positive wire, you're actually gonna attach it to the circuit breaker. The circuit breaker is gonna come in the kit. It's gonna have a wire already attached to it. Once you get it connected to the circuit breaker, you attach the other end of the red wire to the positive side of the battery. Your kit's gonna come with a switch. Uh, our customer chose to put a switch inside on the dash because he's probably not gonna be using this, but it's gonna give you about an eight foot cord. So if you did wanna use this, uh, this bracket on these side-by-sides is kinda hard to get these switches to mount somewhere in there. Switch is simply gonna plug in to your control box. You'll notice on the bottom here, it's gonna have a notch so it's properly lined up and it's gonna have a nut on it that'll screw on to make sure that the plug does not come out of the control unit. As I mentioned, if you're one to use this, again, it's gonna give you about eight foot of extra cable. Uh, you can hang it right out of the top of the, the hood there, stand out to the side, get your side-by-side -side out of a sticky situation. When you're done, simply roll it up, and you can store it in your glove box. Last thing we need to do for our installation is install our hook. Keep in mind, if you switched over to a synthetic rope, you will need to get a different hook. The one that comes with it uh, is not removable. The hooks, different size hooks, different types of hooks can all be found here at eachother.com. Once you got your hook installed, install your strap.
Again, I'm Shane with eTrailer.com. I hope this video has helped you whether you're still deciding or installing the eTrailer.com 2500 pound winch on your 2016 Polaris Ranger.